This is 1968 IMO problem number six. Here is a view of this problem. We would like to prove that this sum on the left hand side of this equation equals the um, natural number n. So I'll be careful on the left hand side and let me expand uh, the left hand side in the following way. So I will write it as follows as n plus 2 to the 0 or just 1 actually. Let's just <coughs> uh, 2 plus oops uh, n plus 2 over uh, 4 plus huh? um, I'll be careful here and I'll write it in the following fashion um, 2 to the power k plus 1 plus n plus 2 to the power k plus 1 over 2 to the power k plus 2 and so on uh, all the way up to this and um, so let's focus on this left hand side we need to show that this sum is equal to n and where uh, here uh, the index k uh, where uh, let's write it here where um, what I have in mind is the following I want to squeeze n in the range 2 to the k uh, to 2 to the k plus 1 well obviously because uh, we have an exponential form here um, obviously 2 to the uh, n minus 1 or 2 to the n these numbers are huge compared to n so way before that uh, we should be able to squeeze n right so which is less than 2 to the power n right so you can um, write this uh, okay um, I probably need more space for that let's do it, do it like this where Okay, so let's let's write it again. One is less than or equal to two to the power k. Strict oh, sorry, less than or equal to n. Strict less than two to the k plus one. Less than two to the n. Okay, um, four um, four four k um, four k. Uh, well, I guess less than n, right? Okay, the reason I did that, uh, I did that is because if you focus on uh, these two terms, right? Uh, let's focus, for example, on this term first. If you focus on this term, uh, because n is uh, greater than or equal to 2 to the k, uh, we will have, so this expression, which is greater than 2 to the k, plus 2 to the k, this whole thing will be greater than 2 times 2 to the k, which is 2 to the k plus 1. But dividing it by 2 to the k plus 1, this expression would be uh, at least 1, right? So probably it will be very close to 1, because and the inside of it would be, let, let's write it like that. So the inside, so the inside will be greater than, 1 but overall the floor will be exactly equal to 1 but as I look at the next term that's interesting well because n is strictly less than 2 to the k plus 1 adding 2 to the k plus 1 to it right so if you want let me let me do it here uh, so n plus 2 to the k plus uh, let's do it this way n is uh, strictly less than 2 to the k plus 1. Let's add 2 to the k plus 1 to both sides of this. Uh, less than 2 times 2 to the k plus 1, which is simply 2 to the k plus 2. Now, if you divide both sides by 2 to the k plus 2, which is our numerator here, you just realize that inside the floor is uh, less than, strictly less than 1, suggesting uh, that the floor of this expression would be uh, zero, right? Does that make sense? So this whole thing is just, it contributes zero to the left-hand side. And every single term afterwards will just contribute zeros each, right? Including the last term. So really, uh, this uh, summation uh, will kind of stop at this uh, number. And indeed, you can even calculate, uh, so from here, you can easily calculate uh, the value of k as well. Um, right, right. So using logarithms, obviously, you can take the log of both sides and you should be able to get it. Um, okay, okay. Um, so going back to our thing, uh, our expression, now we want to uh, to deal with uh, each of these expression summons. We realize that we don't have to go beyond this. All of these just vanish. Um, so what I really need is to have a good understanding of the first part. And for that, um, 
uh, I will make use of the following fact, which is uh, which, uh, 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 a claim, if you will. I have the following claim, and my claim will work out not only for uh, integers, but even for reals. Okay, so my claim is that um, the floor of x over 2 plus the floor of x plus 1 over 2 is equal to the floor of x for x reals. Okay, so how do we prove that? Well, first we can make this uh, simple observation that if we had to increase x by 2, we just realize that this uh, the inside would become x over 2, well, x plus 2 all divided by 2, so that would be just x over 2 plus 1, but plus 1 inside the um, inside the floor, meaning it, the, the floor will increase by plus 1. Here the same thing will happen on the, this one as well, because if you increase this one by 2, um, and then factoring out the 2, <coughs> so it will increase this one by, by 1 again. But if you increase this whole thing by 2, the x by 2, so this whole thing will increase by 2. So therefore, um, nothing changes. So that kind of gives us the idea that we can really uh, restrict our attention, restrict uh, attention uh, to, to the interval 0, x, 2, since, uh, like I said, I, I just did a minute ago, since adding 2, um, or, or let's say it like this, since uh, replacing, let's say, since replacing x with x plus 2 increases uh, increases both uh, left hand side and right hand side of this equation of equation um, of equation by by plus 2 okay so now that we restrict our attention to this interval we you can uh, huh, immediately see that look at this first expression um, any number strictly less than 2, x divided by 2, that would be definitely less than 1. When I take the floor, that will vanish. So really, we need to show that uh, indeed this uh, is equal to x for that particular interval. And it's not too difficult to see this is true huh? for 0 x. 2, all you do is you can split into two subcases. So the first case would be what happens if x is between 0 and 1. Uh, in that uh, sub-interval, uh, the left-hand side, huh? um, well, the left-hand side, you are between 0 and 1, the max it will get would be 1. Um, well, not quite there. So, so a number less, strictly less than 2 divided by 2 is strictly less than 1. So the left-hand side would be de definitely equal to 0, the floor of that. And the right-hand side obviously will be 0. So boom, done, check. The second case would be what happens if x is between 1 and 2. Now, when you check the left-hand side, again, uh, a number uh, between 1 and 2, you can think of like 1.5, if you will. So 2.5 divided by 2, it will. the left-hand side will be like 1. Huh? Uh, and the uh, right-hand side will also be 1. Check. And we are done. This proves that, indeed, uh, these two are equal in that range. But you can easily... Uh, extend this range to cover all the real numbers um, and for that purpose or at least we can focus our attention on the positive ones obviously because our question w is just based on the natural so we have more than that actually in this particular case so therefore this uh, claim is true <coughs> now we can go ahead and use this claim to uh, to obtain this uh, summation and for that obviously the idea is I will write this equation repeatedly and I will come up with a telescoping argument so uh, let's go ahead and uh, create each of these summons right so uh, we can uh, start with um, replacing x with n so uh, that would give us n over 2 uh, the floor of that plus n plus 1 all divided by 2, that's equal to n. Um, right. Uh, you know what? L let me do it down uh, here so because it will be better. So, okay, so we're down. Uh, all right. So uh, let's do it down here because I realized I need to do a few manipulations before I uh, go further. So uh, I will plug in uh, for 
x and replace x with n like I did uh, just a minute ago. So n over 2 plus uh, n plus 1 all divided by 2. That's equal to, we just proved it, it's equal to n. And we keep doing it. This time I will substitute x with uh, n over 2. So therefore n over 2 over 2, the floor of that plus the floor of n over 2. Oops, that's a terrible handwriting n over 2 plus 1 all divided by 2 that's just n over 2 and so on so let me do a few more so I this time I will do it n over 4 or 2 square if you will n over 4 that would give me n over 4 divided by 2 plus n over 4 plus 1 all divided by 2 is equal to n over 4 and finally, uh, uh, I can go all the way to, I claim that it would be sufficient to go all the way to, um, uh, I guess, n over 2 to the k. Is that right? Let's try that. Um, n over 2 to the k divided by 2 plus uh, n over 2 to the k plus 1 all divided by 2. That should be n over uh, 2 to the um 2 to the k, right? Does that make sense? And let's see if I need another term, I will just add it at the end. But then I can just organize each one carefully and uh, like simplify what I mean. Uh, so if I simplify this, so the first one just is clear. I don't have to make any changes here. Um, that's equal to n. Well, the second one becomes n over 4 plus, huh? so this guy is n over 4 plus you have n plus 2 over 2, n over 2, which is n plus 2 over 4 and that one is equal to n over 2 oh i forgot the floor function here so this one would come out n over 8 i mean not out but it will become n over 8 this one would be n plus 4 over 8 right so n plus 4 over 8 wow so these expressions these second terms on the left hand side seem familiar right okay that shows we are on the uh, good path so and finally the last one uh, n over 2 to the k plus 1 plus, um, um, so that's a 2, uh, n plus 2 to the k, n plus 2 to the k, old, ah, shoot. Okay, so let's do it again, n plus 2 to the k, all divided by 2 to the k plus 1, <coughs> excuse me, um, 2 to the k. All right, people. Um, the reason it makes sense to stop here is you just realize that this was the last, very, very last term, which is non-zero, right? We discussed it earlier. So if I go one more step, those numbers are just zero, right? So if you want, I can just do it. Uh, so this guy is definitely zero. Uh, and then this one, n plus 2 to the k plus 1, all divided by 2 to the k plus 2, because n is less than 2 to the k plus 1, adding these two will be uh, less than 2 to the k plus 2, dividing it by that, so again it will be 0, so 0 plus 0, and this side is obviously 0 too, so so you, you just have 0 plus 0 equals 0, which is uh, useless, but anyhow, let's just keep it, I guess, all right, so let's just go ahead and see if our telescoping idea should work, would work, so the n over 2s here would vanish, n over 4s will vanish, obviously n over 8 will vanish on the next equation, and then blah blah blah, all the way, and then eventually this guy will vanish with this guy, this guy will vanish, uh, with this guy but I don't really care because these are already zero as well so I can just uh, get rid of them and like I said even this one is um, even that one is uh, just uh, zero right so adding all these uh, I should get to uh, right 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 so let's let's just do it so uh, therefore on our on the left hand side so I can start from this expression and add each of these so therefore we have n plus 1 uh, divided by 2 plus the next one n plus 2 divided by 4 uh, all the way uh, and let's add another one n plus 4 divided by 8 plus da 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 plus uh, n plus 2 to the k divided by 2 to the k plus 1 is equal to and look at that the only expression left on the right hand side is this <coughs> going back to our expression 
remember this was what was needed to be shown right so the left hand side we were supposed to show it's equal to the right hand side but indeed n is a positive integer so that's indeed equal to n right and boom we have exactly the expression on the right hand side well we, we are missing a few terms obviously but you can easily add these because they are all zero right so you can add starting from this term uh, you can make it look like uh, uh, all the way up to n to the power uh, 2 to the n divided by 2 to the n plus 1. That won't hurt. This would be equal to 0. All of these would be equal to 0. Finally, we have um, this whole summation n plus 1 over 2 plus n plus 2 over 4 plus da 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 plus all the way up to n plus 2 to the n divided by 2 to the n plus 1 is equal to n. And that proves uh, this beautiful question. Uh, now, uh, something that bothered me when I saw this was, hey, uh, we know that this thing would even work if uh, uh, for reals, right? So, but we still decided to restrict our attention to n. If we changed n to be a natural, instead of a natural number, to be a real number, all the question needed was to add this... Um, the floor on the on this right hand side, right? So <coughs> this gets us thinking that there's probably something deeper in this question, um, and 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 the question is uh, is possible actually to to solve using a combinatorial uh, argumentation. Uh, let me uh, give you uh, the idea behind it. So let's go ahead and consider the following set. Let's say that the set n, and I don't mean the natural numbers, I just mean a set n. Oh, let's change its name actually. Let's call it m. Okay, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, all the way up to n. And now consider the following uh, subsets, uh, if you will, uh, of this set. Um, why not? Uh, why don't I just... Um, List all of them. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four. When I say list all of them, I mean, uh, obviously I can't, but at least I can, uh, because I don't know what n is equal to, right? So n minus one and n. All right, so look at this. Uh, let's start with, um, with the odd numbers. So consider the odd numbers. Um, let's, uh, okay, so I can do it, hold on. Let's do it like this. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. Um, well, I, I, I don't know what n is. Depending on if n is odd or even, pretend n is odd, so therefore n as well. But you can easily do it for even case as well. And look at this. Okay. So obviously, if I can easily call this set, say, m1. And m1 consists of these elements. It's a subset of the set m, right? Okay, but what I do next is the following. This time I list the numbers which are divisible by 2 but not by 4. So skip the 4, um, skip the 8. Does that make sense? Skip the 12 and so on. Right, so maybe let's say, let's assume that n minus 1 is divisible by 2 but not by 4. Do you see a pattern here? Let's call it m2. And next is... Um, Consider now those uh, numbers inside this set that are divisible by 4, but not by 8. So skip the 8, but make sure you pick the 8, the 12, I should say, sorry for that, the 12, and so on. And next, I will pick the 8. I won't pick 16, but I will pick 24, and that will go as well. But what's the meaning of that? Well, can you tell me how many numbers are in... Uh, the cardinality of the set m1 well the number of odd integers less than n less than or equal to n right or a number of odd numbers inside this set or the number of odd numbers uh, less than or equal to n is uh, as you can imagine is just n plus 1 uh, divided by 2 the floor of this expression and you can easily test it right so for instance if n was say 7 Right, so it would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 4 odds. And indeed, if I plugged in 7 here, 7 plus 1 is 8, 8 over 2 is 4, the floor is, uh, is 4. So, But if I was thinking more about 6, so 6 plus 1 over 2 is just 3.5, but 3, right? 1, 2, 3. So that works. How about the cardinality of M2? All the uh, integers in this set that are divisible by 2, but not by 4. So how many of them do we have? 
Well, um, I, I'm thinking of 2, 6, 10, 14, and so on. It turns out that it's quite easy, again, to show that this is just n plus 2 over 4. Does that make sense? And we can keep proceeding like that. Uh, M3, huh? so this third layer here, M3, those that are divisible by 4 but not by 8, so 8 is not part of it. Well, that one is just n plus 4 divided by 8. And I can keep going like that, right? But look at these numbers, right? So uh, finally, uh, for instance, if uh, I can write mk is equal to n plus 2 to the k divided by 2 to the k plus 1, like I did earlier. Hey, that, uh, that's reasonable, right? So we have n integers here. And of course, it's possible to partition the set m, hmm, this set, into all these disjoint uh, union of subsets, right? M1, M2, M3, Mk, all the way to Mk, right? And indeed, their sum should as well be equal to M because it's it's a partition we are talking about. So this would imply that N plus 1 over 2. Isn't that a beautiful uh, uh, combinatorial interpretation of this problem? So uh, I, I really enjoyed this problem when I, uh, when I saw that. So... Um, I wanted to share it uh, with you guys, so I hope uh, you guys enjoyed it as much as I did, and that solves, uh, that indeed solves this problem. Well, obviously, I need to make some uh, technical adjustments like I did here in the previous one I, by adding these zero terms. Each one of these are zero, like, like usual. You can do the details on your own. Uh, you can set the conditions for, for k, obviously, right? So, um, but... Uh, but let me stop here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, there is um, the floor function is uh, is a common theme uh, in uh, number theory problems. Uh, and make sure you uh, study it well uh, before your exams. All right. Uh, looking forward to see you guys in our next lecture.